All right, well, I'm back at it again. I'm here on day two. Looking at the painting, I want to scrape down the edges. I've got some thick edges of paint I want to scrape down before I start. Paint should still be pretty loose and wet and should come off easily. I also think the sky is a little too rich. It's a little too deep blue and a little too dark. So I think the first thing I'll do is mix up a little bit of color to decrease the chroma. So the first thing I think I want to do is mix up a little bit of lighter value, lower chroma, cerulean blue, and come in over that sky I already have. I'll just dry brush it on, try to not go too thick so I, ha I leave some of that sky that I already have as a layer, a visible layer. Then I'll work into the water I think next just to get the canvas completely covered with the right colors and the right values. All right, now I just want to reestablish a few things now that I put the sky in. I want to reestablish the trees up into the sky just a little bit. I saved some of the color from yesterday, so I don't have to remix that. And it's not dry yet, which is good. The sun is coming from this direction mainly, so I want to make sure that the highlights are on this side and the shadows are on the left side.
right, there's the rocks, the cliff face, the trees restated roughly. I'm pretty happy with that. Get a little atmospheric perspective as it goes back, it becomes more contrast, more vibrancy as it comes closer. Next I'll mix up some colors for the water. Uh, so that, that'll be fun. That water should go fast and it should be pretty fun to paint. There's a big brush. But first I need a cup of coffee. I brought my paints and I'm looking, I'm going, wow, it's got everything in the background and there's lighthouse and these waves growing up and growing up the rocks and it's so exciting. Isn't that wow. gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Huh? That rainbow effect that you get at the breaking of the wave. Did you yeah. see that? I, I haven't even saw, seen that yet. Oh. <laughs> it's got everything else. It's got so much. I yes. Think. Okay, I'm going to park myself here at some point in the next few days <laughs> for a couple hours. What do you, what medium do you use? I've got oils. Nice. That's what I'm doing here. Is that what you have? Yeah. yeah. Cool. This is really nice. Isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful spot. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Plan air is, is really hard. I just took it up last summer. So it's like, you get out there and I just sort of panic at first. I don't know. It just little... It definitely takes some practice. It does. Alright, I've got some colors mixed up now for the water, ranging from light greenish blue for the background, a little bit of purple for the middle ground in the water, to a richer cobalt blue for the closer middle, and then some warmer greens for the foreground breaking wave. I haven't mixed up the foam yet, but the foam is it's a little bit of cobalt yellow in white, mostly white, where the sun is hitting it directly. And then it looks like maybe just a little bluish lavender on the shadow side of the foam. All very high value because the sun is side hitting it from the side and is really beautiful. I'm not going to try to do the rainbow effect here. In the studio I may play with that just because it's so pretty.
All right, there's the basic shape of the water in. Now I'm going to mix up just a little bit of highlight white and throw it on the white water. Okay, I've got a few more colors mixed up now for the foam on the water, the white water. I've got a yellowish white, and here's my whitest white, just a hint of cad yellow. I've got a warm alizarin crimson white, a cool blue lavender white, and the same as this lavender but with a lot more white in it, and just a touch of cerulean. So these are the shades I'm seeing. This is where the sun is hitting the, the water directly. This is the lightest part, so where the, the sun is hitting the white water most directly. That's the brightest point. And then these are in the shadow. And they're almost the same value when I look at the breaking wave. There's not a lot of difference between the shadow side and the sun side um, in that white water. It's all really brilliant. But I just want to hint at that.
here's where it ended up. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I used the palette knife quite a bit in the foreground there to give it some energy. I roughen the top of the wave to try to capture that splash. I didn't try to get the rainbow effect. I may come back in the studio and do a few dry brush tests just to play with it and see if I can capture that rainbow. Um, or do a different larger painting where I can really set it up to highlight the rainbow. It was just stunning. I wasn't expecting that and I've never seen anything like it before so I, I think I'll get quite a few paintings out of that. Maybe do some small studies. Anyway, it was a beautiful couple of e evenings here on Waikiki Beach. Just a lovely place. Wonderful place to get away from the heat. Um, I don't think it broke 70 degrees. It was just perfect here. A little bit windy, but just lovely. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Hey, hello again. Well, I'm back in the studio after a great trip to Cape Disappointment down on the Washington coast near the border with Oregon, right on the Columbia River. I finished up this 16 by 20 in two sessions while I was down there. I'll put the link to the video here. I want to now take a look at the painting and finish it up in the studio. Someone saw the, a posting of the artwork in progress and contacted me and bought the painting, which is great. I want to finish it up now and correct a few things before I send it to my new collector. Here's the painting before any touch up here in the studio. So the first thing I want to do is gently scrape it down. It's dry to the touch now. I used liquid on site so it helped it dry quickly. Even the thick paint is fully dry to the touch now. I want to gently scrape it down with a palette knife with round corners. I don't want to use anything that has sharp corners because that can dig into the, the painting. I don't want to pick up any of the base layer of the paint. Just take off any debris. I'll also knock off any big ridges that I don't think add to the painting. Like this impasto work here, I like. I'm going to leave it alone. But some of these ridges here, I, I want to correct that a little bit. I don't need a, a ridge of paint, so I'm going to scrape that off. I'll also scrape off any dust, bugs, debris, pine needles. There was some wind, so I got some things stuck on the, the painting there now that I just want to knock off and then correct any blemishes. The sky I like, I think it's about the right value. I like the color combinations. You've got some more reddish blues in certain areas and you've got some more yellowish blues and some whites scattered throughout there, kind of suggesting an early summer day. I'm gonna lighten these background hills just a little bit. They're, they're a little too dark and also clean up the edge clean up the horizon line of the water. It kind of blends in too much right now. It's hard to tell where the water ends and the hills begin. In general, I want to lighten this, so I'm going to do a glaze, very um, diluted down, a lot of medium, with a little bit of titanium white and cerulean blue, maybe a touch of yellow as well, just to shove this back. It's, it's too close to the same value and contrast intensity right now to this. I want this to come forward. I want this to go back. Same thing on the water. I'll do a little bit of glazing on the distant water. And I want to keep any glazing I do out here really fine and small. And as I come forward, any glazing I do up, up closer, I'm going to do larger so that you get that geometric regression the perspective that your your eye is expecting as things come closer they get bigger. I want to tone this down a little. It's too red. It's really jumping out at me. Um, this painting, the center of interest, I think the main center of interest is this this wave. And it's not quite on the one-third line and that's fine. You don't always have to be too rigorous about that. But I think the most interesting thing in the painting is this wave. So I want to make sure that that grabs the attention. This is grabbing too much attention for me. I also want to gray out some of this and 
suggest some spray. This I need to figure out, am I going to keep it a crashing wave? It's a little close to the same size and shape between these two. Maybe I'll shrink this one and play with adding some spray on this one and then keep this one tiny. That way they're not, these right now are all three kind of the same shape and same size, which I don't care for. But I don't want to do too much because I, I do like the painting. It's pretty dynamic. It's got a lot of energy. These one, two, three, four trees, too regular, um, too much the same shape. So what I want to do is maybe chip into this one a little bit with the sky color and then make this more of one bank of trees instead of one, two trees. Just make it a bank of kind of undescribed woods up there. I want to correct this just a little, add that cliff face back in. This uh, white that comes down is a little distracting, so I want to correct that cliff face. And I want to correct this. This somehow, this splashing water creeped up into the well of this wave, and I don't like that. I want this wave to have its nice sweep. I want there to be some reflected blue light showing. And I want there to be some of this warm glow that I saw on sight from this cliff shining through the wave. So to do that, I need this to come down. I'm going to shrink this. I'll keep some of the splash. I think it'd be a little boring if it was all just a sweep of water down here. So I want to keep some of this, but I'm going to bring it forward and shrink it a bit. And then maybe add a little more of a tumbling wave abstract pattern over here. I'm going to play with it as I go. I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to repaint the, repaint the whole thing. I just want to touch it up. I want to keep mostly what I have here and uh, not cover up the things that are working. So what's working? I like this crashing wave here. I like this little bit of spray. I may add to that just a little. I may add a glaze of some rainbow effect not real strong just very subtle spray showing that the wind is whipping the particles of water the droplets of water off this crash i want to reinforce that the wave is is tumbling over and hitting a sweep of water that's coming up under it i think it's it's almost there so i don't don't want to do too much but i want to correct that this is kind of out of place, these purple hues here, and this here is too bright, so I want to correct those just a little bit with more reflected blue light from the sky and subtler, not such a, a big value difference. And I think that's about it. I don't want to do too much to it, so it shouldn't take too long. Oh, one thing, I want to correct the drawing here on the lighthouse. Right now it's too tall. In reality, it's a little bit shorter than this and squatter. So I want to widen it just a bit. I'll bring it this way. I'll add a little bit of shadow. I'll just use the darkest sky color I mix up to add some shadow. The light's coming this way. So I'll add some shadow on this side of the lighthouse and then and bring it lower. Slightly darken the dark. I don't want to go too much darker than that and slightly lighten the light on the sun side. I want to shrink this little building too. In reality, it was quite a bit smaller. Um, this one as well, it's too tall. So just a little bit of drawing correction there, a little drawing correction around this tree. In reality, that tree was smaller and further down the slope. So a little bit of correction there. So I'll get started. Thanks so much for joining me.
painting after the studio touch-ups. I did as little as I could. I preserved as much of the original plein air brushwork as I could, but still corrected those things that I, I felt it needed. I lightened the sky just a little bit and toned down the red just a little. Lightened these background mountains. Corrected the shape of the lighthouse. I made it a little bit shorter and corrected the geometry just a bit. Knocked that tree on the cliff down just a bit. And then pushed that whole bluff back with a, a light glaze. Kept this one brighter, more vibrant. Toned down some of the splashes here so that made this one background splash more dominant. And then kind of corrected the overall shape of that dominant wave, making that the, the center of interest. Knocking this foreground wave down just a little bit. Add a little bit of a glaze to suggest mist blowing off. It was windy there, so the wind was knocking the mist off the top of the wave, catching a rainbow um, later in the afternoon. I didn't try to catch the rainbow here in this painting. I'm kind of at the wrong angle here. The rainbow effect was more visible when looking along the wave, more facing that cliff. So I'm going to play with that. I'll do some smaller studies and try to create some waves with that rainbow effect. It was really beautiful. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you got something out of my studio process, my studio work. I'm going to put a longer version, probably real time, of the studio work on my Patreon page. So check that out if you'd like to see more of that process in real time with more commentary and real time view of my palette and of the painting. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe, share them with a friend, leave a comment below. And visit my website, I sell these plein air paintings at a reasonable price. I don't charge too much because I try to use them as a, a learning opportunity, but I do really appreciate it if someone connects with the painting and ends up buying it. I'll see you in the next one.